really comfort. And th this is, uh, I think, the last one I'll, I'll read from the sort of the newer stuff. Waiting for a sign. I once had a thousand relatives, direct connections to ancestry, but this year I sent out only 21 cards to wish a joyful Christmas. All the time I, I know I'm lying. What should I tell them? That we're all doomed? That the priests who taught us about God have all been arrested? I keep hoping for an angel with a silky voice to sing to me. Or at least give me the correct lotto numbers. But all I hear is silence interrupted by snow plows and my dog licking himself. <laughs> Richard in it is an incredible introduction. Uh, I, I just hope I can remember it so I can write it down and think about it. Uh, he mentioned uh, one of these poems. This is called Flying Over Iowa. And every time I go, I fly, I always figure I'm going to die. Uh, so I'll, I'll write things. So when they do find the plane in my body, they'll find this remarkable final piece. And, but anyway, this is one that survived. Uh, 21,000 feet below, I rose divide or join like a star. Well, this isn't much to report, but with snowy flatlands to the horizon, five roads joining is a major event. Occasionally a rule of dark earth snakes across the field as though a giant mole has passed underneath. Up here, immense sky, and down there, endless earth. It's hard to imagine one God for all this, much less one president. <laughs> Um, this is a, a poem about a friend of mine, Eddie. Um, this is simply called Eddie. Eddie, you were the strong one, black belt, biceps as big as saucers, and you could hit a baseball 400 feet. While your wife and two blonde sons watched, but how do I make sense of the world? While driving Emily home, she tells me you had been tapping maples with gas-powered tapper. You noticed something wrong, and when you tried to tap the next tree, the bit shattered and fragments flew into your eyes and lodged in your brain. And while you lay on the ground, your wife yelled at you for abandoning her. She cried for the pain you were going through and then praying. You would die without suffering any longer. I stopped the car. I don't believe you're dead. You couldn't have died. You were everything some men dream of being. One defective gas power tapper. One the company forgot to recall. One the hardware store didn't remember selling has made all the difference in the world. Um, I, I wish I had written something uh, brilliant in all these years. It was just sort of. Uh, light little things. Um, here's a, a poem <coughs> um, from uh, one of the first books. And it's uh, called Profiles. I won't read the, oh, the whole set. There are six sections. Uh, it's called The Literary Genius. Well, he writes about his friends turning against him and about war and being drunk and what a pain in the ass his old lady is. He writes about being 48, pot bellied and how he suffers because the New York poets have an in for him. He writes about revenge and about women he could never have. If he stuck to writing about what he knows, he could produce a book of one page on which is written a very short haiku. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, by the way, I've, I've written two haikus in, in my life, and, and one is called, I think one is called Marriage, I think it's called No Money, No Honey Moon, um, Just a Kayak Over Niagara. <laughs> 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 the other one is as best as possible. No, the, it's called as best as poem, and it's. I haven't even thought about this a long time. Oh, let me see. Uh, 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 I am the man with the asbestos heart, doing as best as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sorry, um, but it's true. I think I'll read uh, maybe two more. Uh, this is called Remembering James Dickey. Um, these aren't necessarily in any order, right? My favorite poems, just ones I haven't come across. <laughs> well, uh, there are, were trips to Tucson, James Dickey, San Diego, New Haven, but I remember most the nights at the Pierre Hotel, where you and I in our white suits, creatures from some renegade revival meeting, as Carlo the Major D spins us to the right dining room where the New York Quarterly is giving awards. It is October. The World Series is on. Carlo refills our glasses and relays the scores. Yankees beating the Dodgers. Reggie Jackson, the straw that stirs the drink. Homers in three consecutive at-bats. Well, there were other trips, reading, southern reminiscences, back roads to good fishing. But those October nights, long after midnight, in the blurry delirium, our elegant white suits wrecked. There were some of the, you know, they turned kind of pink and purple in spots. Um, we hug in sweaty deliverance. We swear we'll meet again on that other shore, beyond the roar of this world. A religious insight so clear, a dizziness so sweet, as to be believable. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 